Hi guys, this is Catherine with Spasmodic Arts, and we are going to be washing wool in this video today. I wanted to give a quick disclaimer. This is the way I wash wool. There are so many other ways to wash wool, and I am continuing to learn, and I am continuing to um, tweak my techniques and all other things. So. I want you guys to watch this video, learn from it, but definitely don't take it as the gospel. And let's get into it. All right, so this is the Lincoln Winsleydale mix that we will be uh, washing in this video. And the way I start out is I try every single um, time with each batch to do an overnight cold water soak so i have one of these tubs from home depot i believe it's like what you mix paint in it's filled with cold water and now i'm going to take my fiber and immerse it in to my cold water soak so sometimes um with longer wool i will take out each lock and try and kind of preserve it. But I've done a huge portion of that already with this uh, fleece. So I'm just going to take some handfuls. Ooh, and submerge this. Now the reason we do this is because this fleece has been heavily skirted. I made sure before I purchased it, it's been heavily skirted, but it is still extremely dirty. If you can see, it has mud on the tips where the sheep decided it wanted to have a mud bath. It's really, really dense with mud, um, dirt, a little bit of hay. And I find that during the soak, you'll get some of the hay out and almost all of the mud so that when we go to scour our wool, we really are just able to focus on getting the lanolin out. Also, second cuts will fall out. Um, I might pick some second cuts out, but since I've been working with this box of wool or fleece, for a good month or two, um, I've been doing it in uh, small batches. Since I've been working with this in small batches, I know that we don't have a lot of second cuts. Um, so this is the last bit I'm going to put in. Again, you can see all that dirt and mud. That's what we're trying to get rid of. So once you have it all filled, um, you're just going to pop a lid that comes with it on. And then I normally put this somewhere where my cats can't reach it. And it stays in here for about 24 hours. Let's see if you can see all that mud in there already. The water is already muddy. Um, I keep it overnight. The I keep it overnight in this bucket you can keep it about 24 hours I wouldn't suggest anymore because otherwise it's gonna start smelling like mildew so that's all for now and I'll see you in the morning when we are going to wash this all right so before we get into the video fully I wanted to show you guys what supplies you're gonna need to clean your fleece I have a 16 quart stainless steel pot I have the lid around here somewhere you're going to need a lid and some type of pot since this method we're doing on the stove. You're going to need some tongs or some type of utensil to immerse in the water when it's hot. I use some Simple Green all-purpose cleaner. It's a degreaser. I use some white vinegar later on in the process. And I also have my best friend regular dawn dish soap this stuff is amazing i have done six loads loads i've done six washes and i got this for 8.99 at home depot and i've only used about that much so let's get started 
So this is the fleece from last night that we put in the soak. I'm just taking it out of the bucket, giving it a gentle squeeze, and transporting it into the bowl. You can see the water in here is yucky. It's very dark. It's full of uh, dirt and grime. But, and this is where I've learned and made mistakes. There's no lanolin in this. And if there is, it's a very, very tiny amount because it was a cold water soak. I will dump this uh, rinse down my drain. Now, once we scour the wool and it's full of lanolin, I don't want to dump that down my drain because it's almost like dumping very potent bacon grease down your drain. So I'm going to dump this down my drain, rinse it out, and then I'm going to fill my 16 quart pot with water, put it on the stove, and I will tell you what we're going to do from there. Alright, so we have our 16 quart pot on the stove. I filled it to about three and a half inches before the top. I'm going to put the lid on my 16 quart pot the heat is on high. I want to get this to right before a boil and that normally takes my stove about I want to say 15 minutes just because this is so much water to boil but um, the having the lid definitely does help so I will check back when we are ready to put the wool in. All right, so my pot has come to a low boil. So I am now gonna add the simple green. Very scientific how I do this. I just put a couple glugs in. I mean, that's really as best the way I can describe it. And then we put a decent amount of Dawn dish soap. Um, if you guys want, I could maybe figure out how much Simple Green to Dawn dish soap I use, but I've honestly just eyed it. You need to keep in mind the Simple Green's a degreaser, and the Dawn dish soap is honestly our main uh, kind of worker bee in this, so I would definitely add more Dawn than I would Simple Green. I can always tell because if you look, um, there's almost a blue-green tint. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But there's like a blue-green tint to the water. So my pot is on low heat. I've mixed that all up. I'm now going to add my fiber. And you don't need to worry about felting your fiber. Um, we're not really changing temperatures here from the cold soak to this now. Because I did remove this from the cold soak about an hour before I put it in the pot. So it's come to room temperature. Now I'm just going to poke all of that fiber down and if you want to come up you can see the water is already milky that milkiness is the lanolin just already sloughing off the um, fiber so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lid on and our first round of scouring is going to be our pot on low heat I know I'm safe to leave my pot on low heat because I know it's not gonna oil on low heat. Some people will just turn their stove off completely. I'm going to leave this for 45 minutes just because I am using a very heavily greased wool. So 45 minutes on low and then I will come back and show you what to do from there. Alright so the timer has ringed. It's been 45 minutes. And if you look in the pot, you will see how 
just milky it is. Already, for our first scour, you can see that the wool looks whiter. So what I'm doing is I'm just transferring my wool with my tongs into a bowl. Now, some people would do another scour, which means I would empty this water out. Sorry, my dogs are playing in the background. I would empty this water out, and then I would put some more um, Simple Grain and Dawn in. That's for if, you, if, say, you let your water cool, the lanolin is going to stick back to the wool or if you have a super super greasy um, wool that's another reason you might want to do a double scour um, I personally only do double scours if the wool is really really greasy otherwise I'll just do another rinse over some heat but right now I'm just making sure my pot is completely um, empty. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask my lovely fiance, who's manning the camera, uh, to go dump this out onto our yard. What's awesome is the Simple Green is biodegradable, so it's not gonna harm our lawn. And the Dawn Soap, I have not seen an issue with it harming our lawn. If you wanted, you could pour this down your sink, but I don't recommend it just because, again, it's like baking grease. What you could do is if you don't have another, uh, or if you live in an apartment, you could have another pot for rinsing, and you could let this cool down. The linoleum will harden at the top, scrape off the... Not linoleum, sorry, lanolin. The lanolin will harden at the top. You scrape off the lanolin, and then you can empty this out in your sink. But since we're fortunate enough now to have a backyard, I used to have to do it differently. Since we're fortunate enough now to have a backyard, he's going to go empty this out. I'm going to refill it with some water, and we'll be back in a second. All right, so I have rinsed my pot out. It's got clean water in it again. I have my stove on, stove on low. I call this next section like the heated rinse. I'm doing air quotes. Because I'm keeping the flame on my pot. So the water is going to maintain a higher heat than what it would be if it just came straight out of my tap on the hottest setting. So our wool is still pretty. Oops. Gets messy. Our wool is still pretty sudsy. So technically, I mean, this is a second scour almost because while I didn't add any more Simple Green or Dawn, um, it's still got soap active in it. It's still going to be on high heat and we're still going to put a lid over it for 30 minutes. Now, I have three more rinses I do after this, but you guys might find that you put more soap in and you need more rinses, you put less soap in, etc, etc. But um, after this rinse, I'm going to show you how the vinegar comes into play. Um, and the only other thing I can say is be careful because from now on, your wool is very likely to felt. It's got soap, it's got heat, so if you give it agitation, it's going to felt. So I'm just pushing the wool down very gently with my tongs. So again, another 30 minutes, and then we will be back. All right, so this is our heated rinse. So I'm I turned my heat off completely. 
I'm moving the fiber. And if you can see in there, it's still pretty milky. Um, oops, sorry, I spilled this. It's still pretty milky, which means we definitely rinsed out some more lanolin, which is good, which is also why we keep a timer on. You don't want your rinses to go more than um, 30 minutes if you're using hot water, hot water because the, um, the water will um, cool and release the lanolin. So I'm going to dump this out, fill it with water, and then I'm going to show you what I do for my second rinse. One thing I did want to mention is when you are filling your pot up, you want to fill it with the hottest water possible. You don't want to fill it with cold water, then pop it on the stove on low heat, and then put your wool in because you're going to felt it. You want to try and keep this water constantly very, very hot. So um, I have my heat or I have my water turned up to the highest heat setting, and that is sufficient for the next couple rinses, which is why we don't need the stove anymore. Also, this rinse um, that I just showed you before this, I poured it down the sink because it did not have that much lanolin in it, so I felt safe to pour it down my sink. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do that's so special about this rinse. If you remember, I showed you we had some white vinegar. The reason we have white vinegar is because white vinegar is going to, sorry, I'm trying to think of the word, nullify the uh, soap. So because we still have suds in our wool, the white vinegar is actually going to counteract the suds and basically stop them from working. So this is a very important step. I actually only started using this step uh, a couple months ago and before then I would have to rinse and rinse and rinse to make sure I was getting all of my soap out of my rinse water. So. I'm just adding the wool back into the water. As you can see, I mean, it's already so white. You'll see little bits of um, vegetable matter you can just pick out. Um, I normally leave that till the end. But yeah, so we're going to put the lid on this and let it sit for another 30 minutes or maybe even 25 just because I want to be cautious. I want to be very cautious about not letting the water cool. So that is definitely where lids come in. So I am going to empty this out like I've done before, fill it up with hot water again, rinse it, and that'll be the final rinse. And once I've done that, I will come back and show you guys where I dry this in my house. And um, I will kind of give a final summary of everything. Alright, so my setup for drying is in my bathroom. I live in Texas, so it's extremely hot and humid outside. But if I bring my fiber in and lay it on this um, old window screen, the heat works to my advantage and I can control the humidity. So my fibers normally dry by morning. So I'm just taking my fiber from the bucket in little clumps, shaking it out, and laying it over my screen. I just want to spread it out. I do about one batch at a time on my drying rack. I'm going to try and DIY a larger drying rack so that I can process more fiber. But for now, 
this is what works for me. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you the finished, dried, beautiful Winsleydale Lincoln that you watched me wash in this video. All right, it's been a couple of days since we washed our wool. This is some wool I had washed previously. Um, the wool that is upstairs in my bathroom has yet to dry because it's been extremely humid outside. But I thought, just so I could get this video up in time, I would show you guys what it looks like dry and dyed. So I used some Dharma dyes on this. As you can see, the way we washed it, we keep our lock structure. So you could spin from locks. I'm going to card this. I also want to show you what it looks like carded up. So this is it, all carded into a bat. Um, I have spun straight from this, but I think I'm going to blend this with some other fibers. You can see how cloudy, soft, and lofty that looks. But anyway, this was such a awesome video to film. I hope to get more videos up about dyeing wool, washing wool, spinning wool, and all good things involving wool. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.